Have you ever had that feeling? What am I doing here? <laughs> and a fabulous Latin American dancing you've just watched. And of course before that the marvellous ballroom dancing. And those two guys were complaining to me. One of them said, I've been retired 12 years. And the other guy says to me, I've been retired 10 years. I said to him, try 26. <laughs> so it's a delight to have the opportunity of uh, talking to you this afternoon. And um, Vicky sends her apologies for absence, but of course she's doing rather an important job elsewhere at the moment. Uh, but I've been a lucky boy through my life. Very lucky boy. And I'm lucky this afternoon to be assisted by one of the finest lady dancers of the modern era. Please welcome Natasha Karabek. So now you're thinking, what on earth has that got to do with the high-speed, fabulous dancing that you're going to see this week in Blackpool? Well, I would suggest to you quite a lot. Because if we want to enjoy a social dance, well, I'd probably have a couple of glasses of champagne first, obviously. But if we want to enjoy social dancing, we've got to express the music through joined bodies. Ballroom dancing is unique in that respect, that the members of the partnership are so close together, for the, hopefully, for the whole dance. I know of no other dance form where the members of the partnership are so close together. And we're supposed to be expressing the music through our joined bodies, a, new, a unique feature of this style of dancing. Of course, if we want to be competitive dancers, we have to do more than that little shake around the floor that we just showed you. We have to also try to stand beautifully. We try to show good body lines, good leg lines. You can't do anything without a pair of feet. It all starts down there with a pair of feet. You can't even dance socially enjoyably if you've got a pair of beefsteaks down there. No good. You've got to have great feet. Uh, let's just very quickly, because it's not really the subject today, but we'll just look a little bit at how we're going to stand. We're going to try and make it look very natural. Ballroom dancing, in its simplest form, should look natural, as we saw from the two uh, great couples earlier today. It all looks natural. It doesn't look difficult. It doesn't look contrived. I didn't see any rigid digits. I hate a rigid digit. Oh, can't bear it. You saw softness. You saw harmony. This is what we aim to produce. So, first of all, of course, I have to try and stand in a fairly erect manner, making it look rather natural, lining up my blocks of weight, of course, I pick up through the middle line. My partner produces a lovely little curve into my right arm and a slight forward curve. But overall, we're aiming to make this look rather natural because we've still got to tick from foot to foot. That's what we've got to do. We've still got to be able to do the same thing, even although we're standing in what you might think of as a competitive frame. I'm going to digress for a moment and tell you two short stories that I think are important. I'm a bit of a golf fanatic, and some of the other people here also are, and I was watching the US Masters on television from Augusta, uh, Georgia, and Sir Nick Faldo, our greatest ever uh, UK golfer, eight times Masters champion and so on, he was doing the commentary. And he's looking at the guys coming down the last few holes, last four or five holes. And the other commentator said to Sir Nick, can this guy win? Can this guy really win? Can he win? 
So Nick thought for a moment. He said, well, yeah, I think he'll be all right if he relaxes his shoulders. Marvellous. I thought this could be a dance lesson. He'll be all right if he can relax his shoulders. Not easy to do under fire, trying to play golf, or when you step out on that floor in a grand final and try and dance beautifully. Not so easy, eh? The other thing, another little story, I don't know that the lady's in the room, but a very good dear friend of mine recently went for some ballet lessons. She went for some ballet lessons. She's a ballroom dancer, but she went for some ballet lessons. And I suppose she was doing, don't take pictures of the look of the old boy, he can still bend his knees, not a lot. See? So doing some kind of exercise or whatever. And the ballet teacher said to her, but dear, try to relax your thumbs. Try to relax your thumbs. I thought, well, that's absolutely marvellous. Because of what I know, you cannot isolate tension. If you tense up those thumbs, it's going to run through your body. And you will dance in a tense and stiff way. Basically, no good. We have to have a response to each other through that first touch. That first touch is very important. I'm not going to gaze at it or anything stupid like that. But... That first touch, the sensitivity I feel. I almost know whether I can dance with this girl when I touch her. Lovely soft hands. No grip, no rigid digits. Huh? The other hand. Ah, oh, just placed onto her. And now there's a oneness through the whole thing. I don't try and do something special with the left hand. Something special with the right hand. It has a oneness of feel. A lovely oneness of feel. And that's what we're aiming to do. I don't want pressure. Have a look at this body of mine. I can't deal with pressure. <laughs> pressure? Oh, no, 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 I can't take that, I said to Anthony once in a lesson. Don't let her breathe on me, I can't stand that, I said. So, of course, we have to have a weight connection. We have to have a weight connection through five points. The joined hands that I've just discussed. The common centre, which I won't go into too deeply at the moment, but right front to right front, I'll call it my hand on Natasha's back, her upper arm to my lower arm, and then her hand to my upper arm. So through those five points, we're gauging what is going on. But then the next question must be, what is it precisely then that Natasha is following? Am I pulling her into place with this hand? Am I moving her with this hand? What am I doing? No, no, she's responding to subtle shifts of body weight. It's what I do with my body weight, conveyed to her through the five points of contact, which will tell Natasha what she will have to do. Put another way, there are no steps. There are no big steps, there are no small steps, there are no intermediate steps. There are only steps that are caused to happen as a result of what I do with my body. I shift body weight, it creates a step. At the other end of the scale, we look at the upper body shapes. There are no big shapes. There's only movement. It's what I do. It's the movement I create that will make a shape. I can't have the lady throwing herself about. Wouldn't be able to deal with it. Especially me. Look at me. Give me a break. So, if I want to lead my partner, I do something with my body weight. She reacts to it. I do something else with the body weight. She reacts to it. The fact that Natasha has kindly consented to dance with me today, in a way, makes the whole thing more relevant. I don't dance with Natasha, obviously. Very rarely do I get that opportunity. So there's no way she can know exactly what I'm going to do. She's got to follow me. She's got to follow what I do with my body. OK, so all this sounds great in theory, doesn't it? No pressure, then. I've just got to try and lead her, haven't I? No pressure. Just got to try and lead her. So let's start off with a little bit of waltz. I'll show you a little basic amalgamation and, um, and then we'll talk about what we might do with it if need be, if we had to take avoiding action. If we could have a little... Uh...
ಸರಿ 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 So that's what we'd like to do, okay? But the chances are we might not be able to do that because you get these other people to get in your way, don't you? Well, we've no one else on the floor today, but let's let's assume we got a little bit unlucky and I have to change this and then let's see how we do it. If I could have the waltz again. So I'm trying to keep it very simple. We don't want to be complicated. my intention to swing on through the spin turn and turn in lock as you saw before but we've assumed somebody's got in the way and you, as you can see as a result of that I changed what we did it changed didn't it i went through there something happened how did she know that i don't dance for this it's in germany i live in england i didn't send her an email about it because i still have trouble with the computer that's an age thing and of course okay so let's have a look If I do it a little bit apart you'll see what's happening in the joints a bit more. If I were going to dance the half natural, of course I'd go through the joints of my right leg. I'd release the left side and we come to a collection on hopefully beautiful feet. Now if I want to change that, what happens? I have to rise rather earlier. The weight then changes. If I'm lucky, I let my arms breathe on. I let the arms breathe on so Natasha can counterbalance what I'm doing and that as they say is shape. It's not shape trying to do something physically, it's the type of movement that we've created, the counterbalance that inevitably comes from that that creates the shape. But the way I use the joints of the legs and feet change to make that possible. I would have normally been only commencing to rise here and then swing and release all the way through. In this case I rose rather earlier, pressed up, the pitch of the body changes and then if I can use the word I fall back here and catch my body on feet that are made to do that job. One further thing just to say about that of course I want to leave my partner as a promenade so I have to do something else. Of course this shape's good for the outside step of a right side lead. You all know that. But now I have to turn subtly as the feet come together and that brought us back in line. Now I've got to turn my body to the inside of the turn like so. And then I turn to promenade. And whenever we make a change of center, and my wife always says this when she's lecturing, Vicky Whenever there's going to be a change of center in this case to promenade the man must lead the change of center. I can't have the lady uh, leading the the change of center. It's not McDonald's. It's not self-serve. It's it's got to come out of what I do. Okay, so let's go on a little bit. Let's find another give us another bit of waltz if you would please. So you saw on the first one I rose rather earlier and that checked the weight. Now I've got a different scenario. I've lowered very strongly and checked the weight like so. So Natasha was expecting me to use the joints of the new standing leg my right leg, legs in wing alignment of course. So she's expecting me to use those joints to swing the body up into the weave. But in this case I don't do that. I stop. I check. I move to a pointing alignment on my right foot and just let it slip outside. My partner stays ice cool. Ice cool. And then I turn back to promenade position. So this is the more difficult role, the lady's role. She's got to be so calm there 
whilst I'm in this case changing to left side position, then back to promenade position. Let's just show you that again, shall we? They have much have music, it costs no more, does it? So let's try another thing. Let's look at another situation. Let's assume I get a little luckier this time, get through the spin turn, turning lock. I swing out to the center to the point where I can't stop the upswing there, so the upswing's occurred. Let's see what we could do from there. A little bit of music. I'll just do it from promenade. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is an exercise in using your feet. My partner expects me to go through this foot and swing up to the next point, but instead of that, I use extra pressure, bring the weight back again, so pressure, then I turn my body, which brings her to the left side position, slip outside, she stays super calm, I turn back to promenade, and as we say in English, Bob's your uncle. Now, so if I just do that again for you so you can have a look at it. Yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? Uh, cost no more. Well, I was intending to do all four dances, we'll have to get a move on now. So, uh, tango. No rise and fall, no swing and sway. I'll say it again. No rise and fall, no swing and sway. So I've got to lead my partner through what? Through checking and the way I use my turns. Let's have a little tango music, please. So a little basic amalgamation. Come on, Richard. I bet you haven't seen a four set change for a few years, have you? <laughs> okay, so that's what we're intending to do. But as often happens when we hit the centre, people are in the way, all sorts of other things happen. So here we go. Uh, yeah, why not? I can't remember what I did. What did I do? What did I show him? I can't remember now. Did the check and I came back again. Yeah. Okay, so the next one might be if we get as far as the fall away. Okay, let's have it again, shall we? And perhaps I get past the pivot. What could I do then?
actually, I was guilty of holding my partner that time. I was not very good. Sorry about that, Natasha. Uh, what, what we need is considerable counterbalance to make that work. I didn't quite do that. I held on to her. Naughty boy. I won't say the rigid digits, but I held on to it. Not good. So I'll try and do it again a little better. I'll do it slowly. Give myself. Oh, all right then. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> Give me a break. I'm 66. As you can see, I, I checked the weight like crazy. This time I was, I was a little better, Natasha, a little better. I let you go a bit, let you, so we get that counterbalance. And then I shift my body like crazy to the center of the turn. That's what it feels like. I shift it like crazy to the center of the turn. So you get tremendous energy from the, uh, the counterbalance. But counterbalance is, once again, nothing to do with leaning back, lifting hips up, sticking your thumbs in the air. It's nothing to do with that, nothing at all. It comes from movement. Thank you, Anthony. I've got to show you this just quickly. You've tempted me into it, Anthony. It's your fault. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, so let's give you one more little idea in tango while we're, while we're hot and bothered. Let's do it. Thank you very much, you're very kind. Um, now we do this, once again it's a question of turn, isn't it? I would be going on through that foot, but I use a lot of foot pressure and turn the body swiftly, which causes Natasha to do the swivel. I then move my foot subtly to wing alignment. I turn the body to match the foot. I see Anthony smiling, obviously proves that. And then I give it hell on the right lunge. That's a little technical term we use. Yeah, when all the technique's over, I would really give her some on that right lunge. <laughs> Such as it is. <laughs> but not from the top of my body. Oh, no, 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 no. The right lunge now is danced in a line from the foot to the shoulder. I hate it. I can't bear it. The hip line stays virtually parallel to the floor when we dance the right lunge. It's a very manly step, very masculine. I look like a big flower if I do that. <laughs> hate it. So the hip line hardly changes from parallel to the floor, and then I give her some. Bang! Stand, look at it, admire it. Admire your work. And you probably need a blow as well. Yeah. Okay. Slow fox. Slow fox.
was all going so swimmingly, there was bound to be a mess up somewhere, wasn't there? My mistake entirely. I'll show you what I was trying to do. And then the old brain took over. Alzheimer's probably. Let's have that again, see if I can dance what I wanted to dance. Now, let's assume we get a bit unlucky again. What, what can we do? Well, there's a number of options, obviously. You probably already guessed them. Because we're keeping it very simple. We don't expect to make up something complicated. So we're cheating a bit there, we're not showing you anything new, are we? It's the same thing that we did in tango, but of course in this case, I just drop the weight a little bit quicker here. I let the weight go through that foot a bit quicker, so a little bit more acceleration to then retard. So you get acceleration, deceleration. Two of the most attractive things in ballroom dancing, actually. That's what I could see when the two boys danced earlier. Gorgeous to watch. They didn't go slow, quick, quick, did they? Nothing like that, both of them. They gave you the old nonsense. They gave you the slow, quick, quick. And that's acceleration and deceleration, which brings the simplest steps alive. OK, let's go on and show them something else, shall we? Same again, Foxtrot. So we get a bit luckier this time. We get past that first point. So there we have the top spin, lovely basic step. How do I lead it? Well, I don't allow the weight to progress into the right foot. It changes Natasha's footwork, she now doesn't go through the heel, she stays up on the toe, and I check to the new direction. And I did rather too many of those, didn't I? But while I was waiting for the floor to clear, and then on we went. Right, I'll give you one more little thing in Foxtrot, then I, oh, then I've got to move on. So one more little thing in Foxtrot. You all know that figure as a tumble turn. I was dancing that years, I'm sure Anthony was as well, years before I ever heard the term uh, tumble turn. It was always part of my floor craft. You know, somebody's in the way, I would press up, so extra rise in this case, accelerate with an and count, one, two, three, and four, in order to move off in another direction. So when people are talking about a tumble turn, just remember, whatever dance it comes in, it's basically a, a, a feather finish and a pivot. That's what it is. Uh, it's moving on a bit, isn't it, Ken? Yeah, okay. So I was going to show you some fabulous quick step. 
This was the dance I wanted to get out of. Now, now I've let myself in. Okay, a couple of bars of quick step. So just some basics. So in this case, nothing new and exciting, was it really? I did the same thing. Quick, quick, slow, slow. Instead of rolling on and through a hill lead, I rose rather earlier, pressed up, and came back in another direction. Of course, you've got feet to catch the weight. But as I said to you before, there are no big steps, no small steps, no intermediate steps. Only feet that are caused to happen because of what we do with centre. Right, okay. So... I think I need some water. Failing a gin and tonic, which is probably not available. Oh, I could merge with gin and tonic. Thank you, darling. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> I can't do that. No, my old feet won't do it. Don't wind me up. <laughs> uh, uh, just one moment. First of all, I might tell you, when, BD, when the BDF asks me to do these things, I always say no. I always find an excuse. Because I, I don't always enjoy the experience. But today, thank you very much indeed. You've made it uh, very enjoyable. The few hours before it are not very enjoyable. Well, <laughs> while I'm up on the stage trying to think about counting numbers and I'm thinking about my lecture, this is not a great situation to be in. But um, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for making it such an enjoyable experience. And I'd like you to thank, on my behalf, the absolute marvellous dancer that she is, Natasha Cadaby. And we'd like to... <laughs> Actually, it's sort of loading the gun a bit, but... We'll dance a bit of foxtrot and see if I can lead Natasha through a few steps. We'll see what happens. But, you know, this is not a perfect science. We're just winging it a bit. Uh, where's the music man? There he is. Good point. <laughs> 